Hello everyone, my name is Gal and I'm a rep for Anatol and I'm here with a guest today. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? So I have 16 years experience providing accounting and tax services to manufacturers and wholesalers. So today we're going to be delving into the mysteries of Section 179. What is Section 179 and how can it help people who are looking to purchase equipment? So Congress created Section 179 to encourage companies to invest in more equipment and expand their operations. It's only available to companies for 2023 who have less than $4 million in equipment purchases for the year. So it's not available to big companies. It's solely focused on small and medium-sized businesses. So where they'd normally be required to depreciate those purchases over five to seven years, they instead can take an immediate tax deduction for 100% of the purchase. Okay, so I'm really unfamiliar with Section 179 and I'm starting out my business and I'm going into the garage and want to go and buy some equipment and start pulling that squeegee. Um, what is the benefit for, let's say I'm spending about $20,000? What is the benefit um, that I can, or what can I write off, I should say? The benefit for a $20,000 purchase would be about $6,000 of tax savings. And you can write off all the costs associated with getting that equipment in service. So freight costs, installation costs, anything that you need to do to get the equipment up and running in your facility is an immediate write off under Section 179. Really? So I've heard that there is such a thing as bonus depreciation. How is it different from Section 179 and how does that benefit the customer? So bonus depreciation for the last several years has been very similar to Section 179. It gives you an immediate write-off for equipment purchases. But in 2023, bonus depreciation changed. It dropped to 80%, whereas Section 179 is still 100%. Bonus depreciation is going to keep dropping and after 2026 it's going to go away entirely. So Section 179 is really valuable in that it's a permanent part of the tax code. Sounds like a great time to start screen printing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Well, the big question that I come across with is in the current climate, with the way the interest rates have been rising and um, just the way the economy hasn't been as stable as we would like, what can you do if you finance equipment? So financing equipment can provide a tax benefit in that the interest or finance charges are a write-off for the business. So they do reduce taxable income. So let's do some examples. We already covered the 20,000, but let's say we're going with a median package, something around 75,000, all in with freight and with installation, just so that you know. Um, please give us a little bit of uh, you know, exact numbers. So assuming a 30% federal and state combined tax rate, which is a fairly average tax rate for small businesses, it'd be around 22,500 of tax savings from that $75,000 purchase. So let's say we're gonna go bigger and we're gonna go to 120. So Where are we looking at now? So at 120,000 of purchase, it would be 36,000 of tax savings. Sounds great. Okay, let's say we're writing off about $50,000 and my business is only making 25,000 a year. And I can write off that $25,000, but then I have the extra twenty-five. dollars What do I do with it? Am I losing it? What am I going to do? No, the extra amount will carry forward and it will offset taxable income in future years. Okay, so I can split it up between this year and the next year for the equipment that came in this year. Right, so in your example, taxable income in the first year would go down to zero, which obviously means there's no tax, and then that additional amount is going to carry forward and reduce taxable income in the next year. And another question that I have, do you have to have certain uh, requirements? There's no registration or longevity requirements. The equipment does have to be used in the United States. It has to be used more than half the time in a trader business. And as I mentioned earlier, there has to be less than $4 million of purchases for the business for the year. Other than that, there's no requirements. As long as you file a tax return and make the one semi-annual election, you get the complete write-off. Let's say um, I've got a Christmas present for my husband and I'm getting him some screen printing equipment, okay? And this is gonna be obviously Christmas present and it's gonna get in there before New Year's. Uh, do I have to have it installed at that time? You do, it has to be installed and in use by December 31st. So if you're trying to get the write-off for 2023, it's important to order early enough that the equipment can get delivered and installed by December 31st. Thank you so much for stopping by. You educated me and I'm sure you educated our viewers. Um, my name is Gail, I'm with Anatol, and this is Liz with Pasquese Shepherd. If you have any questions on accounting, section 179, how to write off your interest, please contact 
your accountant or tax preparer, or I'm also happy to answer additional questions. My direct line is 224-880-5320. Thank you for watching. This is Gal and Liz, and uh, we're signing off. Bye, everyone.